How would you like to automatically generate commission reports for your sales team so they can see exactly what went into their commission check and how it was calculated? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you two really easy ways for doing that. And I'm gonna to try to set this up in a way that would be helpful to most people regardless of your commissions and your data and how you have that set up. But I also make videos like this for specific software or specific industries and businesses. So if this doesn't quite fit you, be sure to let me know in the comments below and let me know what business you're in or maybe what uh, commission structure you're using, what software you're using, whatever it is that doesn't make this quite fit, let me know and I may be able to make a video that's better suited for you. Okay, so first what I wanna do is show you a really simple method. Uh, this is gonna be the manual filter method. So let's just say you have a spreadsheet like what I have on the screen here, and you've got basic sales data in it, wherever this comes from. So you've got transaction date, your customer's email and name, transaction amount, sales rep, commission rate, and so on. And what you wanna do is you wanna get a table that's gonna show the person on your team, the sales rep, exactly what sales they had that totaled up to the commission check that you're giving them. Well, this method is literally as simple as clicking anywhere in the table, going to the home ribbon in Excel and adding a filter. So I'm gonna click this uh, sort and filter and click the filter button right here. Okay, so now that I have a filter on there, I'm gonna use these filters to get to the data that I wanna see. So let's just say I wanna see this for Jim Halpert. So I'm gonna, um, sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and click this drop down arrow right there. Then I'm gonna click select all to uncheck them all and click Jim Halpert, click okay. And now you can see this is his table. And the total of these should total up to his commission check of $2,090. Now, if you're also doing this by date, and let's just say you have a large data set, maybe this is all your sales for the year so far that's compiled, and you're only wanting to do it for a month or a two week period or something, you can also filter the dates. So over here, I'm gonna click a drop down, And again, it's gonna allow me to filter the dates. So maybe I just wanna see for February, or let's just say, yeah, let's do just February of 2024. Now I'm gonna click OK, and now I can see this is the table for February. What I could do now is either copy this and paste it into an email, I could take a screenshot of it and email it to Jim, whatever way I wanna get it to him, but it's a really simple and pretty quick way of getting to the data for just that sales rep and that date range. But it's not super user-friendly. You've gotta to remember to come in here and apply these filters every time, and then when you're done, you need to come over here and clear the filter and do it for somebody else. So here's a second method that I actually prefer takes a little bit more time setting up, but that works a lot better. Okay, so that's gonna be what I'll call the filter formula method. So in this case, I've set up a table that mirrors the columns of my sales data over on this tab. So similar or the same headings over here. Then I've got my sales rep that I'm gonna enter here and the start and end date. And notice I've got a drop down set up to where I can select whatever employee I wanna view this for and it's gonna to total up their commissions for me automatically, and I have my start and end date. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how I can get this table to automatically populate with the data for, for example, Pam between January 1st and February 28th. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna use the filter formula. So I'm gonna do an equals filter, open my parentheses, it's gonna ask for the array. So what I wanna do is go over to my sales data table, and I'm just gonna hover over the top first column until my cursor turns into that black arrow, then left click and drag across. And that's just a pretty simple way to select that table. So now you can see in the formula bar, table 24, because that's what this table is named. Uh, you could also name that something that makes more sense, but Excel's default name is gonna be table 24 in this case. Okay, so now I have that array, I'm gonna do my comma, and it's gonna ask me what do I want to include. So now I'm gonna specify criteria for what entries from that table I wanna see. So in that case, the first one, I'm gonna open a parentheses. The first one is gonna be, I wanna see anywhere that the sales rep, and again, I'm hovering over till my mouse turns into that black arrow, left clicking. I wanna see where the sales rep is equal to, just type in the equals button, and whoever I'm selecting up here. All right, so the sales rep selector on my filter formula tab. Okay, so that's the first criteria. I'm gonna go ahead and close that off and I'm gonna do a multiply sign using the asterisk and open parentheses. What I'm doing here with the multiplication is adding multiple criteria in an and sense. So I'm, I only wanna return records from that master table if they meet all of these criteria. Okay, so that's what that multiplication there does. Okay, so now what's my second criteria? Well, in this case, my second criteria is gonna be that the transaction date is greater than or equal to 
the start date I specify over here. Okay, I'm gonna close that parentheses, do another multiplication, open new parentheses, and now I wanna check is the transaction date less than or equal to the end date that I'm specifying. Okay, now I just need to close parentheses twice on that. That completes the whole filter formula. Hit enter, and you can see it automatically fills out with Pam Beasley's information from January to February. And notice too, if I change the date here, so let's just say maybe I only want it through the end of January. Now it's going to automatically shorten that up and just show her commissions for the month of Jan January. Similarly, if I want to see Dwight's information, I can just click the drop down there. So you can see it's a lot easier than having to add and remove all of those filters and everything once you get it set up. So that is it. And you can see that's really simple. Then you could uh, maybe print this out <clears throat> and email it to them, copy and paste it into a, an email or whatever. Okay, so I hope that was really helpful. One thing I also want to mention is when it comes to the sales data that's driving all of this, if you need help on getting this in Excel in a way that's more streamlined or automated, let me know in the comments below where you have your sales data that you're trying to get it from and into Excel. Maybe you can get it in CSV format and I could show you how to automatically import that CSV to Excel. Or if you're using a bigger platform, it may be possible to actually have that data linked into Excel automatically for you so you literally don't have to do anything but open up the spreadsheet and then you can have your filter here and get to the uh, report for your team like we just walked through. So those are two really easy methods for getting to that information in a way that's a lot faster than having to manually type something up or prepare it every pay cycle. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, again, let me know in the comments below if you have any feedback for me. And if you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon. And I will see you next time.